Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series in the firmware 3.15 editions. Uh, we know we've recently received this great new update from the folks at Line 6. And I'm slowly going through all of the new features that we've received and kind of breaking them down so that you can understand what we have to work with a little bit better, or at least that's the goal. Today, I am looking at one of my favorite new features, which is the really fabulous dynamic plate reverb that we received. In the previous firmware, we received a dynamic hall, which was a great addition, but now we've received some other great reverb. So without further ado, let's head over to HX Edit and dive into what the dynamic plate is actually all about. So here we are at the dynamic plate reverb. What I've done is set up just a very fast preset based around the template I always use, a little LA Studio comp at the end, parametric EQ, which is only being used for low and high cuts, the dynamic plate reverb, and my little low and high shelf EQ that I always have in there to some varying degree depending on the preset. And I decided to go with a matchstick channel one just at these stock settings. Uh, that, that basically come up uh, when we pull them up, except I think I got rid of the low and high cuts since I have those at the end here. So the dynamic plate, what do we have here? We have decay, we have pre-delay, we have damping, motion rate, motion range, and you'll notice I, I have those snapshot enabled for good reason. I'll show you that uh, very shortly. We have a mix control, low frequency and low gain. Low cut, high cut, level, and trails, which I've turned on. Now let's go through these one at a time. So the decay is obviously going to be how long this reverberates for, how long before the reverb decays. So we have settings here from the extremes from 0.1 seconds all the way up to 45 seconds or even infinity. So pretty interesting stuff. We'll take a listen to how that affects things in a moment. I think the uh, default setting comes up around two seconds. Uh, the pre-delay is going to determine how long it's going to take before that reverb comes in. So I've done videos about this before, and I think this can be a very powerful tool if we use it uh, in situations where we have a bigger reverb. We hit our note, and if we want that note to kind of just be the note before reverb engulfs it, we can use this to kind of stretch out the time before we actually hear the reverb. Damping, in the release notes uh, for the new update, uh, they I'll, I'll read you directly what they say. It says, determines the frequency above which the reverb will be absorbed. For example, if your hall is full of people wearing fake ocelot jumpsuits, more high frequencies would be absorbed than if the room were empty. So it is just going to show at what frequency it's going to start dampening the sound of the reverb. Motion rate and motion range are going to be very interesting, and that's where the dynamic portion of the dynamic plate comes from the motion rate. Again, I'm just going to read to you what it says here in the release notes, just so we can get it right from the folks who designed this. It says motion rate is how fast the echo's intensity changes due to changes in plate tension or temperature. And motion range is how much the internal delays change, similar to the modulation control on older tank reverbs. That might not mean a lot to folks, and I'm gonna do a comparison shortly to let you hear the difference, but the dynamic reverbs all have these motion controls. And I guess in layman's terms, to my ears, what it does, it does just that. It gives a sense of motion to our reverb and makes it less static sounding. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. Mix is just going to be the blend between the direct signal. On zero, we're gonna have nothing but direct signal. 50%, we're gonna have e you know somewhere in the ballpark of equal direct signal to uh, affected signal and at 100% we'll have nothing but reverb with no direct signal. Now the low frequency control is quite interesting. So the low frequency control sets the frequency below which the low gain parameter is applied. And you might say, well, what's the low gain parameter? Well, this is going to set the reverb time for frequencies below the low frequency value. So we can actually have it so that if we set the low frequency at 200 Hertz and then roll this back, those frequencies are going to decay faster, all the frequencies below 200 hertz than the ones above it. And it, it can really be used to tweak these reverbs in a very interesting manner. If we put it above the zero dB point, those low frequencies, are, they're gonna decay slower than the treble frequencies, so they're gonna last longer. So very interesting control, and we will demo that in just a second. And then we have our normal low and high cuts, which will work just on the reverb, not the direct tone at all. So it just applies a low cut here and filters out all of the reverb below that frequency and vice versa for the high cut. Level is just our output level of our reverb and trails on means when we switch snapshots, uh, for instance, that the trails of the reverb will continue. So first things first, let me turn this off. Here's the preset with no reverb at all. I put that on at these settings. Oh, 
Okay, so let's take a look and see what the range on the decay is like. So even at 0.1 seconds, we get a nice bit of short reverb that can be quite interesting with it off. Very cool. Let's go up to the 45 second mark. It's obviously a beautiful long decay. Let's go to the infinity mark. All right, so it just kind of keeps going for a long time. All right, so let's set this back down, maybe around four seconds. So what I was saying with the pre-delay, if we go to zero milliseconds, you can kind of hear how the reverb engulfs the note right off the bat. Let's go to another extreme, 100 milliseconds. Do you hear how it takes that 100 milliseconds before the reverb comes in and doesn't just sort of jump all over our initial note? So that can be very useful when we want uh, maybe a bigger reverb, but we don't want it to engulf the note. We still want that nice attack to come through and not be softened up by the reverb. You can really hear that if you go to the mix of 100% where you can see I pick the note and then 100 milliseconds later, the reverb actually comes in. So very good stuff. Let's put that somewhere around 25 right now. <clears throat> so damping, this setting is going to be the point of where the frequencies above will be absorbed more. So if I come up and put this at 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz, you hear kind of a real graininess to the top end and that's because nothing's being dampened up there. If I take that, go down to 10 kilohertz, we can still kind of hear it. Maybe you don't hear a huge difference there, but if I come all the way down, let's say to 500 hertz, hear how dead the reverb sounds? We're dampening those frequencies above 500 hertz. If we come something more reasonable. So that's an extremely useful control. If we find that maybe our reverb sound too abrasive in the top end or pingy, let's say, we can kind of dampen those frequencies without rolling them all the way off. Now, the motion control at rate and range, I'm going to come back to in a minute. Mix control, pretty self-explanatory. The low frequency is kind of cool. So let's set this up high so we can really hear what's going on. But you'll notice with the low gain set at zero, this is really not going to do anything. Where it's going to be interesting, though, is if I set this at 500 hertz and then bring this way down... Obviously, I'm just doing extremes here so we can really hear what's going on. You can hear the high end part of the reverb, but the low end is sucked right out of it. So if I pull that all the way back, You'll notice that the decay on all the frequencies below 500 hertz is extremely short. If I go the other way, all the frequencies below 500 hertz, the decay is going to be longer than the frequencies above that. So I could come back to something like, let's say, 235 hertz. And you kind of notice the lower frequencies decay longer versus if I come down and put that to a negative setting. You hear the decay of the highs, but the lows kind of just are gone much faster. Then at zero, it's just going to be equal decay time between both. So another interesting way that we can dial in the tone to where we want it. And the low and high cut, obviously, if I bring this all the way up, I'm going to get more of the high end into the sound of the reverb. If I bring that all the way down, I'm going to really dull it.
and vice versa with the low cut. But we can really tailor our reverb to sound pretty much any way we want utilizing these controls. So let's go back, set these at reasonable settings here. Let's go back and look at the motion control. So motion rate, I'm gonna to read to you what they say in the manual again. It says, motion rate or how fast the echo's intensity changes due to changes in plate tension or temperature. Motion range is how much the internal delays change, similar to the modulation control on older tank reverbs. So I thought it'd be kind of cool here. I set two snapshots, one with motion rate and range at zero, and one with them both at 10. I'm going to set a re quite a, a lengthy reverb here. Let's go up to 18 seconds. Uh, we'll get rid of the pre-delay and we'll just kind of listen, maybe take some of the damping away. Just so it'll give us more of a chance to kind of dive into the sound of what's going on with these motion controls. And then we'll do the same thing with both of those on 10. Now, this might not be the type of thing that's super easy to hear what's going on. Maybe with headphones and stereo, it's really going to help hear what's happening. So here I'll, I'll do this and I'll edit this so you can kind of hear them back to back. Here is uh, the motion rate and motion range both on zero. So what do you think? Can you hear the difference? Obviously, we can set those somewhere in the middle of all of that as well. But you just sort of hear that it adds a dynamic movement to the sound, at least to my ears, and doesn't sound so static. So with all of these controls, it really gives us a beautiful way to be able to dial in some very nice plate reverb sounds. You know, so if I went here, maybe around five seconds, I'm going to go up to maybe 50 milliseconds on the pre-delay. We'll dampen down around six. We'll, we'll just bring in somewhere in the middle on the motion. Uh, let's maybe even go a little higher on that. Dial that mix back, maybe 40%. Um, I'll leave the low frequency and low gain alone in the high cut. So let's see what we have here. <laughs> So what did you guys think? That's a kind of a quickish look, I guess, at the new dynamic plate. I hope I explained all the parameters in a way that you could understand how to use them better in your own presets. And I hope you could hear the differences as I adjusted through them. Obviously, there's not going to be one perfect setting on this reverb, as it's usually the case with most reverbs. It's really going to be dependent on your personal preferences, the situation that you're in in the studio or, or composing. So it's really going to be up to us. But I find that at least diving into each control, understanding what they do, it allows allows us that ability to be able to get in there and in a much more efficient and quick manner have something dialed in that's going to be very useful for us. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As I said, I hope that was useful for you guys. and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it. And please subscribe to the channel and hit the little uh, bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thanks again for tuning in and go and enjoy your firmware 3.15 update. Ciao for now.